All right, so let's work on this uh, euphonium etude. Um, so when I look at this piece, I see two different styles. I see one style, I, I like to call it a waltz, or you're dancing. So that's like at the beginning. I almost like to feel that part in one, just because you know it's moving so quick. Um, and then the next next section that I like to, to think about is, is the, the section, this is at bar, 17. I like to think of this as a march, just because it's a little bit more articulated. Um, so we want to, you know, want to make that sound like it's a little, little snappier than what we had at the beginning. Um, another thing about this etude is there's a lot of dynamics. There's almost a different a dynamic level on each, each line of the music. So make sure that you're really paying attention to those, um, especially these, those little um, hairpins where you have a little crescendo and then a decrescendo. So make sure you really make sure you're really doing those. Um, there's there's a few rhythmic things I want to talk about. Um, so the first one will be at uh, this is bar 17. Uh, take that back. Bar 18. There's a dotted A 16th rhythm. This is probably the most misplayed rhythm that there ever has been. So just be careful that you're playing that rhythm correctly. So I'm going to play it two, two different ways. I'm going to play it what most people, how most people play that rhythm, and then I'll play how it should be played. Version number one, here goes version number two. So just make sure that the that this that you with the dotted eighth rhythm that you have three sixteenth notes in that dotted eighth note, and then that the sixteenth note comes in right at the right spot. Da 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 dom dom da 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 dom. So just make sure that's it right in the right spot. All right, so there's a couple different, a couple uh, range things here um, in this etude. So if you look at bar 40, uh, I'm looking at the treble clef version. So mine's an A, but if you're in bass clef, that's a G. Um, so that might be kind of high for you. So what's what's some ways that we can work on um, developing our high register? Uh, one way that I like to, I like to use the mouthpiece a lot. So I'll just take my mouthpiece. Let me get a starting pitch here. And I'll buzz, I'll just buzz just those first three notes in bar 40. So you want to make sure when you're buzzing, and I didn't, I didn't do the best job of that. So you want to make sure that you ha just keep your fingers nice and light on the mouthpiece and you're not jabbing the mouthpiece on, on your face. So I'll try that again. Nice and light on your face, and that you're using lots of air to get you up to those upper notes. Um, the next thing I like to do, then I'd like to play it. So the same sort of thing. You want to just keep everything nice and relaxed as you go up to that those high notes. So it's all about air. It's not about pressing or tightening up your body. So just keep everything nice, nice and relaxed. The next rhythmic spot I want to talk about is in bar 30. Bars 30 and 31. So this part, um, if you look at these bars, just on the only beat that happens on, the only uh, note that comes on the beat is on the downbeat. So what we call that is syncopation. So just make sure that you're really working with a metronome so that you play that rhythm correctly. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, so just really make sure that's very precise. Um, yeah, and just make sure you have fun. That's the most important part when you're playing music. So make sure you're having fun while you're doing this. <laughs> 